There you are. Welcome to Zen Fits here in Blackstone, Virginia, the center of the world, but then you too are at the center of the world. That way everything fits. When you're not at the center, nothing fits. But then, boom, you're at the center and everything fits. What's going on? What's the shift? How can nothing fit and then, bam, everything fits and yet the world is the same world? The situation is the same situation, yet now everything fits. When a moment before, nothing fit. What's going on? The title of this talk is Arouse Your Bodhisattva. Arouse, I got my mic on. <laughs> Arouse Your Bodhisattva. Now, a Bodhisattva came into existence as something, <laughs> as a role model, around the turn of the common era, time of Christ, when Mahayana Buddhism was aroused and that replaced or dominated over Hinayana Buddhism, which was the monastic Buddhism. Uh, before uh, before uh, Mahayana Buddhism, uh, Buddhism was monastic. You had to be a monk. You had to go live in a monastery and go out and beg your food every day. You couldn't. But but this this was a select membership. And this was the the role model of the Hinayana. Uh, was the arhat, the the uh, uh, monk who was going through ascetic disciplines, meditation, self-denial, asceticism, was going to escape the cycles of death and rebirth, or Groundhog Day. It's going to get out of Groundhog Day, the, the, the tape loop of the world, dying and resurrected, death and dying, tooth and nail, suffering, all of that. It's going to get away from it by arousing uh, wisdom. Wisdom. But then, around the time of Christ, and basically the, uh, the rise of uh, the awakening of Mahayana Buddhism and Christianity are really compatible because both are the way of the heart, not the mind the way of the heart. So in, in, uh, in Mahayana Buddhism, which migrated, in, it, it, some, I think maybe it was Alan Watts that <laughs> said, said Zen, Buddha, Zen Buddhism is Buddha, well, all right, Zen Buddhism is Buddhism with jokes, but Zen is Mahayana Buddhism. It's the way of the Bodhisattva. Now, there are two bodhisattvas. There's the bodhisattva of compassion, and there's the bodhisattva of wisdom. This comes out of uh, India. The heart and the mind. The bodhisattva, what, is, what does that mean? A bodhi means uh, intelligence, uh, uh, Alive, intelligence, knowing. In other words, you know you are alive. You know you're in a room. You know you're listening to me. That knowing is Bodhi. Then you know something. You know things. You get knowledge. You get information. You pack the suitcase. That's not Boeing. That's not Bodhi. Bodhi is the knowing. And it is before what you know. You know you're in a room right now. There's no doubt. You don't say, hmm, am I in a room or not? Well, we can imagine that. And if, if you do, <laughs> you know, you, it, anyway. But the point is, it's not quibble. The point is, you know you are. And then you know something. 
then you know what day it is and you know uh, what you're going to do and you and you know what you should have done and then there is the 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 thoughts and the feelings you know them and you know the people and all that and there are a lot of stories about um waking up and not knowing where you are or who you are you kind of like this amnesia who am i well if you wake up with total amnesia you still know you are you just don't know who you are where you are what you are but you know you are that's bodhi you know you are even if your memory's gone if you have alzheimer's you know you are you just don't have any memories of what you know, who you are. That's all in memory. It's all baggage. Bodhi is knowing before the baggage. This is hard for us to fathom because we think and we live in the world we know. We think the world we know is real. And I'm kind of like the knowing is forgotten. For instance, if it's raining, you say, well, uh, it's raining. This is funny, by the way. If I say it's raining, you might say, I know it's raining. <laughs> as if I know it was left, as if, as if the knowing was left out. See, it's raining. But the inference is that I know it's raining. It's not like I mean, I see it. I know it's raining. I can feel the rain. You see, I know it's I don't have to say, I know it's raining. I say, it's raining. But then somebody will say, and this is, this is what a lot of people do, and I've always been curious about that. They'll say, well, I know it's raining. Well, why did they say that? As if, as if they were left out. As if they were forgotten. You see, people say this all the time. What's going on? The Bodhi's being forgotten, you see. Everywhere we, we have forgotten to arouse the Bodhi. Now what is Sattva? Bodhi Sattva. Sat means being. Being is this phenomenal world that we call existence. This room is being. This house is being. This town is being. Being is what we experience as the world. It's form. So bodhisattva is knowing being. And there's no gap. There's no I know it's being. It's knowing being. So that's when I say it's raining. I'm saying I know it's raining. But I don't have to mention I know. I say it's raining. That's, that's a way of saying, I know it's, ra it's be the raining is the being. But then the other person, boy, you left out the knower. I know it's, I know it's, <laughs> it's anyway, I already said that. So we're, we're, we're trying to get at the idea of what the bodhisattva is. Arouse the bodhisattva. Now in Zen, and, and uh, you know, also in, in Buddhism, but, but uh, not so much in the uh, insight meditation Buddhism and all that, but in the, in the uh, 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 Chinese Buddhism, uh, there's the Bodhisattva of compassion and there's the Bodhisattva of wisdom. Two Bodhisattvas. There's a third, but I forgot what it was. The Bodhisattva of com compassion is the heart the bodhisattva of wisdom is the head. Intelligence, heart, compassion. And the, the uh, name for the bodhisattva of the heart is Avolakiteshwara. In China, it's Kuan Yin. In Japan, it's Konan. In Christianity, it's the Virgin Mary. Same thing. Arouse the heart. Arouse the heart. And the Bodhisattva of uh, uh, wisdom is Manjushri. I don't have a picture of Manjushri here. But he sits on a lion and he's got a sword. He's got a flashing sword of knowing. So when you arouse Manjushri, you arouse knowing. The sudden flash. Ah, 
I know. Well, that's that's Manjushri right there. Suddenly, when you're when you're uh, confused and and uncertain, and suddenly, bam! I know that's Manjushri. You're lost. You're daydreaming. You were driving and fell and doped off, and suddenly you don't know where you are. <gasps> Did I go past my turn? Where am? Where the fuck am I? Just a panic, you see. And then you see a gas station. You recognize. Oh, I know. That's Manjushri. I know. Now, what is the Bodhisattva of compassion? Well, the best example of the Bodhisattva of compassion came from my uncle Tommy who was a photographer in Tampa. Uh, he came to live here in the last years of his life, around 2014, left me 500 martini glasses and a lot of pictures and stories. And one story was the story of his son and Emmett Kelly. Now, Emmett Kelly was the famous clown of the uh, Barnum and Bailey Circus, which would winter in Tampa, so Tommy got to take pictures of the circus people. And Emmett Kelly, he's got a broom. I just noticed that. He's got a broom. He's got a broom. So uh, his son, Tommy, little Tommy, became a puppeteer. Because he met Emmett Kelly and was inspired by him. You see this right here? We don't knock anything off. You see, this is fuck. <laughs> yeah, <I can> knock. <laughs> anyway, it's a there. You go. It's a puppeteer. He became a puppeteer, and there's Emmett Kelly right there. Now Emmett Kelly is a metaphor for the Bodhisattva of compassion. Now you'll notice here that this is the sad clown. He's perpetually sad. He's he's. Perpetually, he lives in the world of sorrow, willingly. He comes into the world. He doesn't leave it like the Arhat and goes to Nirvana. Oh, fuck the world, I'm leaving. No, he goes, he, he goes into the world, not away from it. He goes into the world of suffering. Life is suffering, said Buddha. Life is sorrow. Everything you dream for is going to go. Everything dies. Everything dies. No matter what you cling to, no matter what you think is permanent, it's dying as you hold on to it. Uh, it impermanence. Suffering, you see. Is that pessimistic? No. It's not pessimistic if you arouse the bodhisattva because the bodhisattva doesn't run from it. Oh, I'm going to go live in a monastery. Uh, no, you turn and goes right into the world. But how does he do it? That's the thing. The, the bodhisattva of the clown, the Emmett Kelly, the clown, you see, it makes people laugh at the sorrow. The clown, and there are many clown comics, uh, this was the greatest one, Emmett Kelly, because he aroused the, the Bodhisattva of compassion, goes into the world and suffers with the people, but makes them laugh at the suffering. But he, the, the, but the compassion, compassion knows, the Bodhisattva knows, that he can't save the world, he can't relieve the suffering, he can't save people, there's no home improvement plan, there's no manual, there's no way to save anybody. And yet he does it anyway. Why do I, why do I write on Facebook every day? <laughs> it's a thankless job. Why do I give these talks? I'm not getting famous, I'm not getting any money, and I don't know if anybody's watching or not. You know, so it's kind of like, and I'm not tooting a horn. I'm just saying it's 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 aroused bodhisattva. You arouse the energy to engage with the world creatively, even though you know nothing you do is any good, even though you know you can't save anybody, even though you know you can't fix the world even though you know you can't remove the suffering, you can't make it right. 
But you do it anyway. You do it anyway. So the bodhisattva, the knowing that is being, the being that is knowing, it has to be aroused. Can't get a manual to do it. You can't copy somebody else. You can't follow Jesus. You can't follow the guru. You have to arouse the mind that doesn't rest on anything. You have to arouse the mind that doesn't rest on the world. That's prajna. That's Mahayana Buddhism. That's Zen. Arouse the mind that does not rest on the world. So this mind is in the world, totally engaged, but free from it at the same time. So it's both joy and sorrow. It's sorrow if you go in the world, oh boo-hoo, I can't save the world, you know. But if you go into the world, into the suffering, the pain of the world, with the joy of awakening that is free from it, you are both free from the world and in the world at the same time. So you're like a martini. You're like a martini. I used to do martini talks. A martini is a great metaphor for the bodhisattva. This is why my uncle collected them, I think. <laughs> Where is a martini glass? <laughs> Here's a martini glass. I got them all over the house. So a martini is a mixture of gin and vermouth. They're different, the gin and the wine. You could say the gin is the suffering, the wine is joy. They're different, but you stir them together and you can't separate them. So in the bodhisattva, in the mind, in the, in the compassionate mind that's aroused, Joy and sorrow are different, but you can't separate them. They're one. And this is the elixir of the Bodhisattva. Elixir means the, uh, the drink, uh, uh, the Holy Grail, the elixir that heals. So the Bodhisattva, arousing your mind, and we all do this, but we really don't put it in this framework. You see a dog suffering, your, your Bodhisattva is aroused. But then you might want to go out and save all dogs and start a movement. There's nothing wrong with that. But you know you can't save all the dogs. But you do it anyway. That's the point. You know it's impo mission is impossible. It is impossible to save anyone. It's impossible to save the world, to fix the world, to improve the world. But you do it anyway. That's the Bodhisattva. You do it with all your energy, even though you know the mission is impossible. And when the Bodhisattva is aroused, you, your life is aroused. Life is compassion. Life is the Bodhisattva. So that Bodhisattva with wisdom, compassion is aroused, but it has to, you have to arouse Manjusri. And the wisdom that tell you you cannot fix the world, you can't save anybody. The Buddha said that. This teaching won't save anybody. <laughs> you <can't. laughs> but you do it anyway. That's the Bodhisattva compassion. Thanks for dropping in. <laughs>